Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can export your body animations from Unreal Engine and bring those into Blender. Furthermore, we're going to give you some tips on how you can optimize viewport playback in Blender. And finally, how you could integrate this setup with a control rig. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Unreal Engine version 5.7, and I'm going to create a new level sequence for the tutorial. I'm going to open this up. And over here, I actually uh, used MetaHuman Creator to create uh, one of the template characters, uh, Cameron. So I'm just going to drag him into the scene and reset the position to zero. And then I'm going to hop back to my level sequence. I'm going to do add and do the Cameron blueprint. So there are many ways that you could ha have animation on your character in Unreal. Um, one of which is just you have the control rig and maybe I go over here. And I um, first, let's say I go to the uh, details and rotation, set a keyframe there. And then over here, I do this and then set another keyframe. So that's an animation. And you can actually bake this down to an anim sequence asset. That's the end goal is baking down to some kind of anim sequence asset. And then you can export that as an FBX. So what actually I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the control rig entirely from the body. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go over here and add an animation track. And in the settings, make sure that you have the engine uh, content and plugin content checked because that'll allow you to see some of these animations that come with uh, MetaHuman Creator. But I'm going to search for the uh, um, ROM. And uh, it nothing is going to show up, but you have to actually check this allow incompatible skeletons. I don't know why it says this because the these actually are compatible. So I am just going to check that. And you can see this is actually the uh, the ROMs that you see in MetaHuman Creator. So I'm going to do the body ROM and move these back. So I'm going to go here and adjust the out frame uh, for this. So we got the whole MetaHuman character doing its thing there uh, in the level sequence. So like I said, the goal is always to get this down to an animation sequence. So you can go to the body and say, uh, bake animation sequence. And I'm just going to put this in the, the full lore made for the tutorial. And then all the defaults should be fine, 30 frames a second. And then hop over here, to the content browser. On the animation sequence, I'm going to click asset actions and export. And then I'm just going to put this FBX file here. Hit save. And I'll just grab the latest version of FBX. We don't need the source mesh, collisions, LLDs. This is just animation data. Um, the morph targets really don't matter either. So all this is fine here. And then click export. Last thing I'm going to do is just export uh, Cameron's DNA. And if you haven't seen our MetaHuman Creator tutorial, go ahead and check that out because it covers all this in more detail. But I'm just going to choose that DCC export and I'm going to put the file in this folder and uncheck this and assemble. Okay, so we can go ahead and just minimize these. And I'm going to show you right here. So this is what we have. We have that body ROM that we exported as an FBX file. And then I have Cameron with his DNA and uh, his head and body DNA. So let's just fire up Blender 4.5. So you can see it here in the side panel. What we need to do is just go ahead and grab that head DNA file and drop it in the viewport and then click the include body option and import the DNA. So I'm going to minimize this. So now all we need to do is we need to go to utilities. We need to switch the component to body so we can import onto the body. And let's just navigate to our folder with the body ROM that we made. I'm going to click import. So we just imported the animation and notice there's these kind of strange uh, deformations here in the um, arms. And that's because the uh, RBFs haven't evaluated. So if we actually just roll forward a frame, you see how those RBFs are evaluating with each uh, animation frame update. And so you can see that we have the animation imported into Blender. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the view options, just turn off the face board for now and turn on the body bones. And you'll see there's actually different body bones. And if you go into pose mode, and if you look in the bone collections, you'll actually see these, this driver collection. And that is all the yellow bones you see on the, on the rig. 
And that's actually what the animation is imported onto is just the uh, driver bones and then the other extraneous bones. But the driven uh, bones, the twists and the swings do not get animation imported on them because those evaluate in real time through the rig logic module. The driven bones are the uh, red color bones and they're all in this collection. And then the twists and the swing bones are both hidden by default. But we can see um, the, if we click right here, this is uh, the corrective root for the upper arm and this is a swing uh, bone. And if we look down here in the arm, these green colored ones are actually the uh, uh, twists uh, bones in the rig. And these are also all evaluated through the rig logic module. So now I'm actually going to import some animation on the face. So I have this MetaHuman facial ROM uh, that I just imported. And I'm also going to go to the view options and make the face more visible again. So you can see that we have the face board running. So as you're probably aware by now, the MetaHuman rigs are very complex and they actually have a lot of inputs that need to be processed so that they can evaluate correctly in your scene. And we're continuing to improve the performance of the rigs, but I wanted to show you at this point in time, what kind of performance you can expect in terms of playback of your character in your Blender scene. So let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see that we're hitting about 14 frames a second. And we need to get to um, about 25 frames a second. So one thing that you can do is you can minimize the windows and you can make your viewport full screen. And that'll actually increase your frame rate a little bit. Mine is a little bit lower because I have a recording software on right now. But what are ways that you can increase the performance of, of your rig in the viewport? Number one, just turn off the RBF functions. And now we're already hitting the frame rate. Uh, another way that you could do this is you could just turn off the head. So now we're hitting the frame rate with the body RBF functions. And then maybe I'm more interested in the actual face animation, or I'm working on the face animation right now. I could just turn off the body. Uh, and I could turn on the head animation and we're hitting frame right here and we still have the face animation playing. So this is something to be aware of. The more metahumans you have in your scene, obviously the slower frame rate you're going to have, um, but also uh, the more metahuman components that you're evaluating. And specifically, uh, if you're evaluating things like RBFs, or if you're evaluating shape keys, uh, or if you're playing back shape keys in the viewport. So with that said, let's go in here. And if we actually switch to uh, the material preview, this is going to slow down the, the frame rate even more. So using the solid view, it's going to give you a faster way to solid or wireframe is going to give you a faster way to preview your animation. Because ultimately, if we go to the view options, and we change this to masks, so you can see we're getting a little over nine frames a second. If you turn off the texture mask evaluation, you can see that we gained almost three frames a second. However, if we switch to solid mode, we get an additional three to four frames a second. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show is if we go ahead and we just import the shape keys. Okay, and then we can play our animation now. And you can see that we're getting about six frames a second. And that's with all the shape keys evaluating in real time on the head. So if we go over here to our rig instance again, and we just turn off shape key evaluation, you're going to see that we gain maybe another frame a second. But the uh, the real issue Blender is going to have is just having a mesh that has that many shape keys loaded on it in the actual viewport. So the actual changing of the shape key values by rig logic is maybe costing us a frame per second. But the, the fact that we actually imported the shape keys onto the head is actually what's really going to kill performance for us here. I, I say this uh, to people that might be using this as a way to animate their characters in Blender, that maybe you should hold off on importing the shape keys um, unless you actually need to make edits to them. Or if you're actually wanting to render maybe your animation in Blender, um, at full fidelity, then go ahead and import the, those shape keys. So like I said before, we are doing our best to make this rig as optimized as possible. But I did want to show people the difference between real-time rig logic evaluation versus just baked Blender data. So we, let's see how fast we can get this if we bake all the, the calculations that we're doing on the rig instance just to uh, keyframes. So to do this, I'm just going to turn these back on and I'm going to go ahead and play our animation and you can see that right now we are hitting about seven, six and a half 
frames a second. Okay. So now I'm going to go back here. First, I'm going to go to the, the face board. I'm going to click bake and we're going to bake uh, 250 frames. And I'll just say maybe ROM is the name for this. And it'll actually prefix the instance name, which in this case is uh, Cameron. And the component name is head because this is for the head, but you can turn those prefixes off if you want. And I'm just going to click OK. So now we actually bake the face board to the head. And if we go over here, the auto evaluation for the head is actually off now. So there's there's no more connection coming from the face board down to the bones and the shake keys, the mass, and the RBFs. That is all baked data now. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the body. So let's just bake the body. Same thing. I'm just going to call this one ROM, and then it's going to prefix the name with the uh, Cameron and then the component name of body. And all these other things are fine. We have a 250 frame bake. All right, so let's hop back to the rig instance tab. So you can see that actually nothing is being evaluated. So this is actually the same thing as just that as well. So now that we have all the data baked, there is nothing being run through the add-on anymore. This is just native Blender data. And let's see how fast the animation can play with every single thing in it. That's, and, uh, that's including all the blend shapes. So we are hitting almost frame rate. Now we can turn on the materials. And we are hitting about 12 frames a second. Now, granted, this will all vary based on your hardware. OK, and so one last time, I actually just re-imported uh, the character, did not import the shake keys this time, just to give you an idea of what that could look like. And we can play, and we are hitting frame rate. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go here. And I'm going to change the scene frame rate to, say, 60 frames a second. And you can see that with just the native Blender data and dependency graph updates, we are hitting up almost 50 frames a second with this data. But the important thing to note here is there are no shake keys imported onto this mesh. So I'm hoping that gives you a good idea of the performance you can expect just out of Blender itself. And hopefully this helps you make better decisions on what you actually need to see evaluating and how you can optimize your scene to better help you uh, with whatever workflow you're using our tool for. One final note about the body rig is if you want to use something like AutoRig Pro or Rigify to drive the body bones, you don't want to constrain the swing, twist, or the RBF-driven bones, corrective bones. Secondly, you're going to want to tell RigLogic to listen to dependency graph updates for the control rig. So it knows basically that when the control rig moves, then it needs to evaluate the body. So to do this, you can just use a picker and you can assign the control rig to whatever uh, control rig you're happening to use for your body. And just to illustrate this working, you can see if I grab the hand here, you can see what the deformation looks like. And if we turn off the control rig and we look at the deformation, we can see that the RBFs and none of this stuff on the body is actually evaluating when this moves. So you're going to want to make sure that this is connected if you are using a control rig.